Vasco to me is everything. Here's De Lamy and Frankie De Torre storming up to the line. The crowd gets behind me and I love it. Frankie De Torre on Stradivarius. Frankie saluting the crowd. They go head to head, toe to toe. Frankie on fire. I'm not different to an actor going on stage in the theatre. And now Frankie says go. I love it. I need the crowd. I need the atmosphere. I can smell it. I can breathe it. I can taste it. Frankie De Torre, seven out of seven. It's a history maker. Part of me, I'm sorry, you know, I'm addicted to it. The name Frankie de Torre will forever be synonymous with that of Ascot Racecourse. A statue of the Italian overlooks racegoers as they enter the track, and his name is the first punters look for on the race card. It's a successful association built over a near four decade career in the saddle. And now, as De Tori prepares to bring his career to a close at the end of the year, he can reflect upon a relationship with the Berkshire track that will go down in history. His first major success at the track came at Royal Ascot in 1990, when he partnered the Luca Kumani trained mark of distinction to victory in the Queen Anne Stakes. Three months later, the same horse provided Frankie with his first Group 1 winner of his career when the pair registered success in the Queen Elizabeth II Stakes. It's Mark of Distinction and Distant Relative, very close. Mark of Distinction on the far rail. Distant Relative, 50 yards to go. Mark of Distinction it is. Distant Relative for second. Frankie has notched 77 Royal Ascot winners, including eight victories in the Gold Cup. He's ridden the winner of the Midsummer Highlight, the King George VI and Queen Elizabeth Stakes on seven occasions, and who can forget the day he made history by riding all seven winners on the card on Queen Elizabeth II Stakes Day at Ascot in 1996, a record-breaking achievement christened the Magnificent Seven. On a day that was to cost the bookmaking industry a reported £40 million, it was highly appropriate that a horse called Wall Street would get the ball rolling with a straightforward win in the opening Cumberland Lodge Stakes. It's Wall Street being pushed out, hands and heels, and Nick in front holding Sam and Ladder as they race up to the line, and it's Wall Street for the money, wins the Cumberland Lodge half a length. Frankie had given Diffident little chance of landing race to the Diadem Stakes. Indeed, he had even vowed to bear his backside under Newmarket's clock tower if the horse were to win. However, the race panned out perfectly for the pair and they held on to win in a dramatic three-way photo finish. Leap for joy in front now from Diffident, now putting in the beat challenge. Lukai and Prince is flying, don't reckon he made it. It's tight though between Diffident and Lukai and Prince. Here's the result of the photograph of first place. First, number four, Diffident. As De Tori later conceded, nine times out of ten, Lucayan Prince and Walter Swinburne would have won, but a special day was now developing ahead of steam. The third race was the big one, the Queen Elizabeth II stakes, and the match between De Tori aboard Mark of Esteem and Henry Cecil's magnificent filly Boz Rasham, ridden by the late, great Pat Edry both winners of the Guineas back in the spring. And this clash was hugely anticipated. De Tori knew that his best chance of beating Bosra Sham was to unleash Mark of Esteem's trademark acceleration as late as possible. So tracking Bosra Sham, De Tori pressed the buttons as late as he dare with devastating effect. Here's Mark of Esteem who gets into the clear from First Island, Charnwood Forest. Ascalani can't win, 100 yards left to go. Bosra Sham is grabbed now by Mark of Esteem. He's too good to Colt. And it's Mark of Esteem who goes on to win the QE2 stakes. <laughs> Dittori still maintains that to be one of the best performances by a miler he has ever ridden. So with three in the bag, the ridiculously competitive Tote Festival handicap was next, and Frankie was aboard seven to one chance, decorated hero. The pair had to overcome a bad draw, but an unsustainably fast pace allowed Frankie to head to the stand's rail as the pace collapsed. It's going to be four out of four for Frankie de Tori, as decorated hero goes on to win well by four lengths. fatefully won the fifth race after surviving a steward's inquiry, as Ray Cochran, one of Frankie's great friends, looked a little unlucky aboard Abea. 
faithfully gets her nose in front of Questonia. Uh, Prancing the big danger, a Bayer running on well. It's faithfully with 100 yards left to go. Prancing trying hard, a Bayer running on well, but faithfully a neck in front, and it's going to be five out of five for Frankie. What a day! After the weigh-in was confirmed, Cochrane asked rhetorically, is anyone else getting a chance today? The final hour of the day would answer that question emphatically. Going to post for race six, the Blue Seal Stakes aboard Lock Angel, Frankie was only thinking of a Super Six and the chance to join Sir Gordon Richards, Alec Russell and Willie Carson as one of an elite club to win six races in a row on the same day. Lock Angel, a talented filly, was to win the Nunthorpe Stakes as a four-year-old and comfortably beat Corsini with Pat Edry once again to Tory's four guy. Frankie's reaching for the stick, Lock Angel is responding. Of course, CD putting in a late rally now on the far side, but punch down, it's six out of six for Frankie as Lock Angel gets there. So could a sensational six convert to a magnificent seven? Dittori hadn't even considered the possibility, but as he went to post aboard Fujiyama Crest for the concluding Gordon Carter handicap, he was a two to one favorite as multiple bets across the country had bookmakers running for cover. Can Frankie do it, seven out of seven or not? He's on the inside, he's just the leader, leads by a length and a half. Dittori established an early lead and mindful that Fujiyama Crest always raced lazily, was determined that nobody, not even Pat Edry once more, would come past. It's Fujiyama Crest, Frankie Dottori, two lengths in front as they straighten up for the judge. They've got a furlong and a half to go. It's Fujiyama Crest, the far side, Frankie Dottori. Can he hold on? He's half a length in front. Fujiyama Crest is a half in front. Northern Fleet on the near side. Pat Edry riding for dear life, trying to peg him back. It's Fujiyama Crest under top weight, a half in front. He's going to do it. Frankie Dottori, seven out of seven. It's a history maker. Scenes of joy and chaos followed for hours afterwards. The champagne flowed and Dittori milked every moment. An extraordinary sporting story that in all probability will never be repeated. Even if it were to happen again, it couldn't possibly occur with the style and charisma that Dittori automatically injects. Days like that one in September 1996 did so much to elevate the sport and Frankie's currency as an entertainer. In the years that followed, he became the sport's most recognisable figure and his appearances continued to grow. He spent three years as a team captain on the BBC's flagship quiz show, A Question of Sport, and even presented Top of the Pops. Yet in many ways, the Italian's love affair with Ascot was only just beginning. It was highly appropriate that the Godolphin operation provided Frankie with four of those magnificent seven winners, as together they were an irresistible force on the world racing scene for years to come. The dominance they enjoyed was demonstrated perfectly with Ascot again, the dramatic backdrop by three of Dittori's seven King George VI and Queen Elizabeth Stakes winners. Lamptara the far side gains the lead, Pentara is fighting back, Lamptara and Pentara stride for stride, Lamptara the derby winner, too good! Lamptara was Dottori's first of the seven and Enable's amazing three wins were utterly compelling, but the Godolphin winners, Swain, Delami and Doyen, each demonstrated the force of the Godolphin influence. Swain straining every sinew and holds on to win again. Wins the King George, his Delami for Godolphin, Saeed bin Sarur and Frankie de Tory storming up to the line to win the King George the sixth and Queen Elizabeth Diamond Stakes. No contest. Doyen is really delivering here. The favourite's going to go on and win in mightily impressive fashion. Doyen wins the King George. Ask Frankie to name the best horses he ever rode and the conversation will soon turn to Dubai Millennium.
Godolphin's champion racehorse shone brightly at Ascot on the two occasions he ran there. Firstly, when requiring only hands and heels riding by Dottori, when an impressive winner of the 1999 Queen Elizabeth II stakes. Proven in the conditions, this is going to be a Group 1 double on the day for Frankie Dottori and the all-blue silks of Godolphin land the Queen Elizabeth II stakes in style, Dubai Millennium. However, the partnership between horse and rider was severed in the most dramatic fashion the following year. The year 2000 had started in the best possible style for the pair as Dubai Millennium stormed to an easy win in the Dubai World Cup. Dubai Millennium, a superb performance to win the Dubai World Cup, the world's richest horse race and a great performance, Dubai Millennium by eight lengths. His next target was identified as the Prince of Wales' stakes at the Royal Meeting, a return to Ascot on much better ground. But just a fortnight before the meeting and nine days before the derby came one of the worst episodes in Dottori's young life. The charred remains of the aircraft lie at the spot where it crashed on the ground. Frankie Dottori and Ray Cochran managed to get out. The pilot did not. Both jockeys were airlifted to Addenbrooke's hospital, where they're now being treated for their injuries. Sadly, the pilot of the aeroplane, Patrick Mackey, did not survive the accident. I spoke to Frankie, he was just very relieved that he's lying in that bed in there and he just asked me to let everybody know that he was thinking about the pilot. Dottori was lucky to escape with just a broken ankle. However, that injury couldn't keep Frankie away from Royal Ascot and he watched on in awe as Jerry Bailey took the ride on Dubai Millennium who pulverized his field. An amazing performance. Dubai Millennium has them stone cold at the furlong pole. Sendawar can't live with him. Up towards the line, Dubai Millennium took Sendawar on and broke his heart and storms away for Cherry Bailey to win to the Prince of Wales' stakes by a wide margin. Throughout this period, Frankie and Godolphin were virtually unstoppable at Royal Ascot and the winners flowed regularly in so many of the meeting's top races. Together, they won five Queen Anne stakes, including with the former Italian racer Ramonti, who prevailed in a thrilling renewal with Dottori producing a power-packed effort in the saddle. Ramonti turtle bow down the centre. George Washington now begins to pick up very late. It's Jeremy, reeled by by Ramonti and George Washington tight. Ramonti, maybe. They also notched three Prince of Wales' successes, including with Fantastic Light, who got the better of Kalanisi in 2001. Fantastic Light and Frankie takes over from Kalanisi. Hytori is staying on from the rear, but it's Fantastic Light, Godolphin's international standard bearer. Fantastic Light wins the Prince of Wales' stakes, Kalanisi second. And with Rewilding in 2011, who was given a ride right out of the top draw by Dottori, to foil the former Australian trained champion, So You Think. So You Think is all out. Here comes Rewilding on the stand side. And Frankie Dottori, he's running down the Aussie champ. And Rewilding gets up to win the Prince of Wales stakes. And Frankie punches the air. There were three gold cups as well in the Godolphin blue with Papineau, Color Vision, and Cape Tara, who defeated the brilliant double trigger in a barnstorming finish. His double trigger by two and a half lengths. Cave Tara, the younger horse, charging down the near side. Cave Tara just getting to double trigger. Double trigger won't go down without a fight. Three cheers gathering them in. Cave Tara and double trigger. The post looms. Cave Tara near side. Cave Tara won the Gold Cup. And Dottori again wrote his own script at the last ever QE2 day at Ascot in 2010. White Moonstone from together, they race for the line. White Moonstone still unbeaten, wins the Phillies mile. 14 years on from the Magnificent Seven, he won four races in a row to again show he was unstoppable when on a roll. Rainfall on the near side of Electric Field and it's a fab four-timer for Frankie Dottori. Rainfall wins. A defining feature of Dottori's career has been the ability to bounce back from setbacks, bad luck 
and in one infamous case in 2012, self-induced recklessness. When the French racing authorities announced that Dettori would face a worldwide six-month ban for drug offences, many thought, with the Italian into his 40s, that his career may be over. Two lifelines were thrown to him, and Dettori grabbed both with vigour. Sheikh Joan Althani was rapidly developing his racing interests and secured Dettori's services with classic winning effect. The Royal Ascot winners returned and three progressive years were underpinned when Galileo Gold won the 2016 2000 guineas and confirmed his class when winning the St James's Palace Stakes at Royal Ascot. Galileo Gold in front, Ortar the Gurkha in second and third places, but it's Galileo Gold and Frankie have won the St James's Palace. American trainer Wesley Ward enjoys a great relationship with Dettori to this day and when undrafted won the Golden Jubilee Stakes at the Royal Meeting in 2015, the racing world was once again alerted to Dettori's talents. Undrafted, Brazen Berg towards the near side, tried to peg him back, undrafted wins the Diamond Jubilee under Frankie. But that year, also saw a formal re-establishment of a partnership that was to provide Dettori with a glorious extended twilight to his career. John Gosden came calling and for the next eight years both trainer and jockey would enjoy so many career-defining moments together. Golden Horn gave Dettori his second derby and back at Ascot the following year, Journey also landed the filly and mare on Champions Day, slamming Freddie Tillicke's Group 1 winner, Speedy Boarding, and the horse who Dettori would ride to Breeders' Cup glory later that autumn, Queen's Trust. Journey settled this with a turn of foot, runner-up 12 months ago, no doubt this time, Frankie celebrates Journey, a great trip, and won so well. Champions Day at Ascot would see Dettori and Gosden team up successfully many times and Cracksman's consecutive victories in the 2017 and 18 champion stakes remain a vivid memory. And here is a champion, Cracksman wins the champion in fantastic style. Cracksman won the two races by an astonishing aggregate of 15 lengths, but surely his second title taking apart the brilliant Crystal Ocean in breathtaking style would leave the biggest mark. Marvel again at the level of Cracksman's ability and enjoy a further illustration of how Dettori added to the occasion with his style and exuberance. They're not going to catch Cracksman, he's absolutely relentless. It's seven, eight lengths clear, Frankie saluting the crowd, a second champion stakes and what a champion he is. But of all the great Gosden de Tory horses through the years, surely not one comes close to Enable. Judmont's magnificent race mare, who under de Tory was unbeaten at Ascot. She never ran there at the Royal Meeting, but rode herself into racing legend with those spectacular successes at the Berkshire track in the King George and Queen Elizabeth Diamond Stakes, becoming the only horse in history to win Ascot's mid-summer all-aged middle distance championship race three times. And this fabulous filly, a dual Oaks winner, and now enable as the King George, and a fifth win for Frankie de Tory. <laughs> enable near side, Crystal Ocean will not give in on the far side. They go head to head, toe to toe. She's just in front of Enable, racing up towards the line, and she'll win a second King George. What a race! That was a horse race! And now Enable is sent about her business as she goes three, four lengths clear. This magnificent mare, a mare in a million, a mare in ten million, one of the great champions of the sport. And for Enable, it's King George III. History is made at Ascot. During 2019's Royal Ascot, 
De Tori once again went on a hot streak at his lucky track, riding four winners in a row. Ayali for Simon Crisford, Sangarius for Sir Michael Stout, and then two for Gosden in Star Catcher and Stradivarius in the Gold Cup. Here comes Stradivarius and Frankie de Tori, this sensational star, Frankie on fire, Stradivarius wins again. Stradivarius was one of the other great horses to grace Ascot for the trainer-jockey combination. The magnificent stayer winning three consecutive Ascot Gold Cups between 2018 and 2020, with his third coming in especially taking style. And now Frankie says go on Stradivarius and it's an immediate response. He's going to absolutely street them. The best stayer in the world, Stradivarius, three Gold Cups. He tried twice more to emulate Yates by winning a fourth. Arguably a little bit unlucky not to get closer to Subjectivist in 2021. Stradivarius only has two behind him and into the home straight. Subjectivist Joe Fanning stole a race heading into the home straight. Subjectivist wins by a good distance. His, or more to the point, De Tori's effort on him in 2022 put a huge strain on the Gosden de Tory axis. Stradivarius now pulled to the outside, Kiprios takes over. Stradivarius begins to stay on out wide, but still more to do. Stradivarius is inching closer, time running out. Kiprios in front, a half length, and it's Kiprios who wins the Gold Cup from Mojo Star Stradivarius. De Tory's sole winner for the late Queen Elizabeth II at Royal Ascot was Phantom Gold in the Ribblesdale Stakes of 1995, and directly after Stradivarius's defeat, De Tory was narrowly beaten on two of Her Majesty's horses. Saga came from last place to second in the Britannia Handicap, and then Reach for the Moon was disappointingly beaten in the Hampton Court Stakes when long odds on. Despite the impressive win aboard in Spiral, who was simply magnificent in the following afternoon's feature race, the Coronation Stakes, Gosden stated shortly afterwards that he and De Tori would take a sabbatical from their hugely successful trainer-jockey relationship. But once again, when De Tori is at seemingly his lowest ebb, he is able to rekindle the spark aboard both a racehorse and within his human relationships. After just a few short weeks, Gosden and De Tory were back in business. De Tory returned to Ascot for British Champions Day in the autumn, and over 26 years since his magnificent seven, he claimed two major prizes for Gosden aboard Emily Upjohn in the filly and mare, and also for Rafe Beckett's stable, landing the British champion sprint on Kinross. Kinross, in the form of his life, going to follow up his foray win, and Kinross wins easily. So, Frankie de Tori's Ascot adventures are drawing to a close. The great horses, Enable, Cracksman, Dubai Millennium, Kaif Tara and Stradivarius have all contributed greatly to de Tori's stunning record at the track. He has ridden 77 Royal Ascot winners, been top rider at the meeting a remarkable seven times. He won the Ascot Gold Cup eight times in all. These are dazzling figures produced by a dazzling talent. That talent still burns bright as we head to De Tori's final Royal meeting. Some of his riding in America through last winter and this spring, as good as it's ever been. A driving finish in the wishing well, outside Big Summer and Freedom Flyer. Freedom Flyer fought them all off. And what a day for Frankie De Tori, who's putting on a show that's his fourth winner of the day. And now, heading into his final Royal Ascot, this Olivier of the turf will surely have more opportunities to play to the galleries, prompt wild celebrations, get horses to run faster than they have done before. Racing fans around the world will be hoping the flying dismounts and the champagne spray will hang heavy in the summer's air one more time for the man fittingly known as Mr Ascot.